to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. When Achan carried part of the treasures in Jericho, that should not be carried there was a system of isolating them from tribe to clan until it came to his family it would have been unfair to punish everybody but leadership provided an opportunity to isolate where the trouble was to deal with it when there is no leadership you will blame you will sabotage the creativity and the effort of others because of one person's mistake There has to be clearly defined tasks and expectations. Let me tell you this. Never provide an office when there is no need for it. Whether it's in an organization or it is in ministry, do not create an office when there is no need for it. Human beings cannot stand being idle and they will find something to do. A church of say 100 people should not be having pro1 pro2 vice president admin vice president this vice president that the work can effectively be done by two or three people the other seven or ten people will have to look for a way to be relevant It's intrinsic in the human to feel that he's making progress and they will have to invent assignments or tamper with other job descriptions for a long time there was no public relations department in this ministry the protocol department was doing the work of five departments because we had not seen a need to create it as god began to bless the ministry the need came and now we had to carve out a department that responds and represents our presence to the international community very very important there is something called due season for things and by the time you create leadership structures that is not yet the season for them you are going to cause a lot of trouble chaos and anarchy if you're with me please say amen, amen. well structured with clear tasks and expectations let me give you an advice that i learned following a pastor's conference i think is a very instructive advice allow for creativity but never without supervision you cannot indefinitely allow people to be creative and just to continue to invent strategies without supervision because their creativity will stretch them sometimes to go out of the pattern given to you by God. So it is good that people become and remain creative. But that their creativity must be within the jurisdiction of the, the order that was given to you. If you allow people, there are things they will do that will get to a point where God will ask you who sent you. In this ministry, for instance, I'm someone who is very comfortable to allow our precious people, and they know I love them with all my heart, to be able to come up with their ways. I don't unnecessarily interrupt. There is a level of autonomy within the various departments, but never without supervision. You don't invent an idea and execute it like that. No. Everybody say leadership. This is very, very important. Number three,
the third key that is responsible for making sustainable impact in ministry is to understand your execution strategy now these things i'm teaching are very powerful they are not my opinions necessarily they are truths that i've gleaned from ministries that have worked based on god's standard and even by the standard of success i've had the privilege by the grace of god to study the largest and most impactful churches in every continent execution strategy that means the strategies you put in place that will allow that vision to come to pass there are three things under this number one your execution strategy is what will invent the activities of the ministry within that season every activity should not be receivable just because a church is doing it a man of god is doing it does not just mean you just ship it and bring it no your programs the subdivisions of the ministry and the various activities in the ministry they come from your execution strategy how god said to do what you should do you see for instance in the miracle service we we didn't start submitting prayer requests eventually god gave me this and said it's an opportunity to be able to pray for the people so every miracle service we collect the request representing the pain of the people and we cry before the lord here and you can tell the testimonies that have come out of it almost every worker if not every worker in this ministry knows the subdivisions of the ministry they are not a secret both the ones for the future and now it is very clear there is an exact leadership organogram that defines the various subdivisions of the ministry these are the platforms through which the purposes of god as committed to us will be executed everybody say execution strategy you need it in business you need it in 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 your organization not just church under execution strategy again is your culture and ethics your culture and your ethics make part of your execution strategy how do you behave what is the modus operandi of the ministry in as much as we frown at tradition in as much as we frown at religion no organization becomes impactful until their impact is systematized are we together i have had the privilege to visit um the churches of all the men of god represented here and for every one of the churches there is a culture there is an ethic i humorously say it you don't find someone in koinonia just because i'm teaching and he's touched he will not just sit down with one thousand naira and hold it from where he is and just throw it and say let it get to the altar no it's not a culture it's not the way it's not the blueprint that god has given to us are we together don't i hope i hope you are not you're understanding what i'm saying it's very important when you go to the bank they have a system of working they have their work ethics they greet you and smile tired or not it's a system they are paid to do it If something falls on the ground now not everybody will come to pick it are we together now there is a system for picking it there is a department whose jurisdiction also make for remedying this kind of thing most people do not have a culture they do not have ethics let me tell you this culture and an ethic is a system of standardization that means everywhere koinonia service is held there should be an expected behavior there should be an expected pattern i have seen ministries look at this i have seen ministries where a whole service 
is like 10 churches in one now you would think nothing is wrong with that the guy who does the opening prayer invents his way of doing it and he does it maybe the way he saw somebody who mentored him the guy taking the praise and worship can choose to just do something and say pastor come up me and pastor we're going to dance are you seeing that now he thinks it's supposed to be a very nice thing he say you you must dance or someone can come up and sing worship and because he starts everybody kneel down everybody in the whole church kneel down his presence is here you see those kinds of things destroy your you are anointed but you may never go far you will know you are wrong when you start a tv ministry when there is an angry person from one nation who will write you and tell the government ban this man he's, he's communicating wrong values to the people a culture there has to be a way of working is someone learning this now you systematize your impact when you have a culture train your workers train your workers give them the flexibility to be creative but you must train them when you are coming to perform a function what is the protocol for what you are doing if you are in house on the rock many of you have been there you would notice they have a system for collecting their offerings for praying for all of this based on the blueprint that was given beautiful system saves time the moment you give offering you pass it to the priest on the aisle and he stands and the ushers just walk pick it up and it's done there are churches their own pattern now regardless of efficiency their pattern is you first go outside are we together and then you give whatever key is comfortable to the music director and then you begin to dance you are liberty to choose how fast or how slow you want to dance and one person would dance and go back and dance and go back and listen listen i hope you are getting what i'm teaching you there are many things we do that at a localized platform they can forbear it but if you want to be global you must adjust not violate your convictions but you must be able to adjust to minister to people what kind of songs should you sing you can't leave everybody to his creativity to just raise any song i say i just had a song this morning and i really like it you will learn it now say this and that and that song may not be compliant with the values as revealed by god to the ministry are we together ethics how do you behave when wealthy people come into that church how do you behave when politicians come what is the system of receiving them what is the system of welcoming them you don't wait till they come then you start thinking what do we do with this guy now no if if the governor of this state or if someone now is going to come what is the system if you don't learn this god cannot bring influential people under your care if someone comes to testify up here and says god bless me I have a job i mean i have created jobs right now i have the power in fact i'm thinking about it between now and next month i'm even looking for about 300 people to give them jobs what do you think will happen to those who are not employed they will wait for him after service they've already come with their cv for prayer so straight they will just go outside and we lay that person and others may find his address and just come and knock many pastors have refused to come back to certain churches because of what the members did after the service they follow them to their house and say sorry i'm not don't be offended i i just i don't know if you can help me zip my house sir. the way god has blessed you no culture no ethic i'm going to share something and please pastor stand up pastor dan don't be embarrassed yesterday after the meeting the protocol came and met me they packed all kinds of um some i think it was a gift or so they brought for him and the wife and then they gave him and said kai you blessed me take sir he refused to collect it he said give the protocol i am here to learn i am here to grow and when the protocol met me i looked i said oh what a wise man i said whatever we can add to this and bless it let us give him and honor him 
you see that a man of god that is in discipline can come to another man's house listen very carefully i went to a particular church and a young man gave me a car i said no 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 i'm not collecting this car go and give the car to your pastor and bless him when he went to the pastor and said sir god spoke to me to give apostle this the pastor called me and said apostle this gentleman is serious he wants to bless you with the car i said well whatever it is are you in agreement with this sir? culture anytime i go to a ministry and i want to do anything that i believe or i know is not the usual practice i will usually seek for permission from the man of god or if i can come stand with him these are things that you have to learn it's not all about anointing 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 there are systems the first system of recovery for a mighty army was the coming back of the skeletons the structure are we together just like pastor fred shared when you enter a man's house listen no matter how great you are if you are in someone else's house you have to walk with their system if they remove their shoes outside take off your shoes i remember the time i went to minister in cherubim and seraphim i was invited to minister there and they were all happy that i was coming and i blessed god for it as soon as i got there you know our dear people there said no 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 apostle enter with your shoes i said why why should i enter with my shoes i took off my shoes because that is the protocol i learned this from dr modok protocol is important adaptation is proof of honor when you come to a ministry don't come at your terms have the flexibility to bend to the practice i never come to a church and then i'm just excited because of my relationship with the pastor i just get up i hold the mic i say god wants to move choir just and you sit down and wait for your time if they call you to take offering don't give word of knowledge let us pray father we bless you for this and that and that when you finish god bless you that's it pray for children don't start talking about marriage and pregnancy pray for children and leave that place as the lord has granted me grace to minister in certain platforms i'm seeing the strictness of complying with these principles because here there are people that can be a bit free but in those places there are people who have earned the right to be offended when you violate their privacy in the name of spirituality is someone learning something execution you must know how to behave and how to function within any organization you must know and you must create a system that way how do they reach you if i want to invite you now and i don't have a relationship with you what is the system to reach you many ministries do not have official lines there's no system of reaching them if you are starting you can use your line for many years i handled my ministrations invitations myself because i didn't see a need to have all of that as as time went and i couldn't handle it again i transferred the responsibility to the protocol department there must be a culture and there must be an ethic are we together the third under execution strategy is priorities please don't be tired of what i'm teaching you we are soon going to pray if you truly want to be effective if you came here this morning it's not just for prayer and impartation is to know the ways of god and to excel these are the inner working systems that make for efficiency priorities that means your focus and your emphasis for the now it's not everything god gave you that you can do now there are things god will tell you that is for 10 years koinonia is going to have a tv ministry we are going to have schools we are going to have all kinds of things but for now for now this is the assignment allocated for now and so we restrict ourselves listen the resources that god will give you will always be sufficient for your program for now 
there are many ministries that do not have priorities and focus a ministry just starts and in one year you may be holding five conferences you may do very well except for the fact that the ministry finance may never rise the entire collection for that ministry in a year at that level may be maybe five million and now you are organizing a program and you are bringing two men of god from the u.s and the two will come with their keyboardists they will come with other people the man himself will fly first class you see that and the pa he can decide and call you and say my son has been crying that he needs to see nigeria you know what that means once a baby can walk he's a passenger full payments like the adult now you pay all of that and you continue to stretch members are you seeing what makes many members run away from the church the program will be powerful but in the end of it is always on deficit always on deficit you cannot build and you cannot grow that way some guys one day i think it was last year very nice group of friends that started to pray and they really believed that they were praying for a revival to come to their land and they sent a text they said apostle we need you in this land and we are going to bring you silver and gold we don't have but what we have mm, just just stop this there don't don't make a fool out of yourselves there are many anointed men of god in that region they will ignore them because they think they are not anointed you see that there is a, there is somebody at your level that can serve the purposes of god have the humility to enjoy that grace and grow as time and wealth and wisdom allows even as i am now as a man of god i know my boundaries spiritually financially sociologically I would be stupid to do certain things and engage certain things faith is not foolishness you must know your boundary and respectfully stay there i will not get up right now and then go to portacourt or go anywhere and say i'm doing a city-wide crusade or go to the u.s and say everybody come and fill this stadium It's called vain glory you must get to a point where you know that god has tried for me but i'm still growing are we together there are many times during our leaders meeting you know we can share a few things that we want to execute and many times my people will just hear me keep quiet over the issue once i shelve an issue they know that's it leave it there It's very very important priorities what do we do now god these are all the things you have said we'll do but which do we start with first what do we do now so number one is an encounter that births your message your convictions your patterns number two strong leadership that makes your impact systemic three an execution strategy that defines your activities defines your culture and ethics defines your priorities number the fourth one is your system of reach i call it your marketing a system of marketing and reach now please listen because many of us men of god are trusting god for increased membership we're trusting God to honor us with more and more people. There is a strategy. Growth does not just happen like that. There are forces that must be engaged for growth to happen. Your marketing and reach. What does that mean? How do you let your world know you are there? The people will not come when they do not know you are there. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad that jesus was in town and it was noised abroad the lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it this is very important please listen no ministry will excel and thrive in today's world 
if you do not have an intentional system for your reach and your marketing this includes business the first way that you reach people now let me talk about ministry i'm focusing this on ministry i apologize for other you know um other areas of purpose the most effective way i know to really draw people is the power of results genuine results genuine results everybody say genuine results please say it say it. don't sleep say genuine results mm. two interesting people in scripture and the way they marketed jesus please sit down sir i'm sorry he's been standing all through i'm sorry sir look up please everyone once upon a time there was a madman in a city called gadara that madman was hidden in caves they would tie him and he would hurt himself and jesus crosses to the other side and the first person he meets is that madman after a conversation with him the madman is delivered are we together now and commotion is in the town because people lose immediately those who who owned the pigs they just lost and there was all kinds of things this man the bible said because of the impact of what happened he went and gathered 10 cities how many cities imagine that one striking work of the kingdom upon your life gathering people let me tell you there are people who they are more than a microphone everybody knows about their challenges and their predicaments and when god touches them it becomes too notable people will always come to find out who did this testimonies are attractive they have a magnetic property they can draw men how did the scribes know that jesus will be in this city and you'll be having a program notice the scribes never sat outside they were always early for the meeting they followed the ministry of jesus followed the details they would hear that god did this today tomorrow he did this tomorrow he did that this is where i will want to bring a little balance there is no other means of marketing and reach that will be more effective than a transformed life please listen to me the greatest way to invite people is to transform those you have you are not going to pray for more people to come and join the pile of lack of transformation change the people the greatest testimony that that really blesses me in ministry it's not that the sick were healed sincerely thank god for that it's not that this and that happened people receive this but when people say my life changed i listened to the message something happened i got to know the holy spirit i became a leader that's transformation this is why you see ministries like that of joyce mayer joel austin you may not see them do physical miracles and so because of that you may think that they are not doing anything until you see the systems that are intentionally transforming people some of them have tv stations in prisons some of them design the programs that the prisons use and so the endorsement of the government has made them a voice this is influence i've told you that the kingdom advances in two ways primarily number one is evangelism number two is influence the second was the woman at the well jesus comes to meet this woman at the well and her life was in shambles many husbands and then jesus began to speak with her when he was done speaking with her he didn't even ask her go and publicize she ran and said come see a man this is how people come to our churches listen 
they will not say don't you know apostle joshua selman they say come see a man when the people come and encounter you and your god then they will go back and say now we believe not because you told us we have seen for ourselves let people not be invited and come to your church and say where is the man the service is over what did you invite me for what was your proposition what did you say would happen to me you told me if i came i would hear the word of god you told me if i came the worship would lift me you told me if i came i would see excellence i'm here now the grace is about to be shared i didn't see any of those things now that person will go back and still publicize but against your impact you say make sure that any day you see this man please don't waste your time there's nothing happening there do not ignore the referrals and the endorsement of transformed men do not ignore it this is one of the ways that God by his spirit has built this ministry for himself transformed lives you cannot deny transformation you may say a miracle is fake a breakthrough is fake a prophetic word is fake this is just psychology but how do you explain a transformed life are we together i was blind now i see i was wrong now i'm right i was in darkness now i'm in the light i was poor now i'm blessed this is the kingdom alongside the results and the testimonies that they bring pay attention to your media ministry media ministry do not ignore it son of man what seest thou and he said a flying scroll he was seeing the power of technology a scroll that can fly it's a scroll that contains information but it's not limited to a localized environment it can fly to regions the media ministry is powerful look what the social media is doing that someone can actually sit down from one spot is a system that has broken down it has manifested omnipresence that i can be here and yet i can be there zuckerberg is in his house but he's in your phone he's in your heart he's in your life he's in your mind he's in your decisions he forced himself into your values you cannot plan without him he didn't ask you he forced his way there you can institutionalize your impact such that any generation that ignores god through you will pay for it whoever ignored jesus paid for it whoever ignored elijah paid for it whoever ignored moses paid for it the media ministry is powerful brand your content to reflect your values brand your content to reflect your values very important media is powerful there are many nations that i have not been to that today have been so marvelously blessed by what god is doing here it is the power of the internet it is the power of the media it's very important a disclaimer though you must have strong spiritual and emotional strength to explore the tool of the media because you see let me teach you something dear men of god an average man of god is already used to lavish celebration by the people within his circle nobody may have the right whether they agree with you or not they may not have the courage to confront you and say i don't like you welcome to the world where they, there are audacious men and women you can make one statement and your members are clapping and somebody comes and says for two weeks let's analyze the nonsense this preacher has said and someone will be saying that's my man of god he said that may be your man of god but that's my foolish man who i'm correcting if you don't have the emotional stamina listen to me because many christians are strong spiritually but we are weak emotionally they said this about me and it destabilizes you 
then do not be global is a risk you are not authorized to be global as a minister and as a man of god if you do not have the fortitude to stand disagreement to stand persecution do not fear being controversial provided you have convictions they talk about jesus and they talk about satan no matter how far you go it will be in between two of them your jesus is the one someone can paint on facebook have you seen different kinds of caricatures of jesus your jesus that we go to jerusalem and roll on the floor for and the people are just watching these madmen i thought they were here for tourism my jesus this is where you died this is your tomb they say this is not the real tomb they say this is the one that i <laughs> don't be offended when someone has no regard for your values men are just men this is a powerful advice i'm giving you when i started out in ministry let me tell you something and an ejimi is here he will testify i'm not somebody that i i'm a i'm a man of peace i honestly don't like trouble so if it means me lying down here for peace to reign i don't like controversy and i don't like trouble and that time i used to wear myself out i would pray and just spend time with god at about one or two when i now want to go and rest someone will now call me and say apostle then there was a place i used to meet in in the campus there are you at so 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 place i said no, i want to go and sleep and then they now blackmail me and say didn't you say god sent you for us I, i'm having pains i want to see you and you are complaining and i feel bad i just go back and say lord this is for your glory <laughs> let me tell you something about men you will never satisfy their desires you do not have that ability the same thing that will put a crown on the head of another is what another person will advocate that you take off if you do not sustain emotional intelligence you will break down nobody wants to hear anything negative about himself if if i produce this and you hold it and say but this is dirty you mean pastor Alpha, this is all you could do as brilliant as you are whereas while you are saying it this person is on his knees collecting it many of you here looking at me you want fame but without the cross that comes with fame there is a huge cross you think it's everybody that likes me are you joking you think it's everybody that believes in me are you joking you think it's everybody that respects me are you joking have you not seen people insult papa Ia Deboe? have you not seen people insult kenneth hagin one time i stumbled across a video material that wrote down the name of almost every known man of god and just captioned it that they are all going to hell i said ah these are the guys that have taught the whole body of christ so if they are all going to hell let's find out quickly so that we can because you can't dodge any of them i mean these guys just carry the body of christ and said the church is going to hell convictions do you have the stamina to be controversial because every great vision is first fought before it is honored it is the price for renaissance is the price for a revolution is the price for doing something different ask the fathers when women began to preach in the church it was war when the power of god began to move i remember a man of god i went to minister in his church and he was telling me about his state he said those days if someone falls under the anointing they can almost go and lock you up he said when the power of god started moving in and through his ministry it was strange they said he was diabolic he was devilish and all of that how will you feel if someone came for your service and while everybody was kneeling down they were just looking at you like this Say, is this what you call a man of God? This is this what you call church? Shame on you. And you go back and say, God, they said shame on me. God will say, go and find out what they said about me. <laughs> Let's keep going. 
how many of you precious sisters they see you walk around oh this lady no earrings oh this lady head tie all the time and you feel bad and you are standing because some persons who have their values don't want to keep their values and come to destroy your confidence bending to become like people will break you because you will have to bend to every direction and your body cannot bend to every direction somebody will say sing traditionals alone we are africans you will dance and somebody say no that dance is is a demonic dance you are doing traditional and you are dancing did you see the way that lady was no 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 the way that lady is dancing will the brothers their mind will not be focused on the cross now you go back to sing hymns and someone will, you know listen be guided by the fear of the lord by conscience and by posterity nothing more you live to please everybody you have trouble god made the work easy focus on him he's the only one who will mark the script everybody is a student the best student in a class will still be assessed so don't let the ignorance of people around just come and challenge you Are we blessed i just digressed a bit we're going to pray to teach you this let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you uneasy lies the crown the the head that wears the crown it looks glorious when you see great people and great ministers sit on the throne but let me tell you as every man of god here if you say a conference is coming you can tell them sir i saw a vision it is done the bills are not there ultimately is that man's faith that is going to stretch you come and say pastor just to reassure you the conference must happen except god didn't give me the revelation you had the revelation this is the man that is going to produce the finances by faith that's why you see depressed preachers everywhere sisters that's why many of you are afraid of marrying men of god when you weigh the trouble and weigh this just a guy <laughs> that's the price for glory my dear people living in a world where everybody loves you that world is a dream that world is a big dream do you have the stamina to be controversial and yet focused and yet determined there are times that i go to minister and i thank god for the honor sometimes right from the airport you know sometimes people have bands that play sometimes they have some dignitaries that they bring to welcome me and i just come down and i see people who don't know me and you just see the anger who is the guy this is him apostle so what i which coin on i mean you see the anger this guy and i say what is it my fault what, did i stop you from rising i mean look at look you see how people are there are many times people talk about my coming in many regions they hype it apostle is coming your life i'm telling you just come i can discern i'm a spiritual man as soon as i enter people are jumping sometimes you can see through the crowd what is this what is this generation becoming just because a man entered jesus entered you didn't clap now a man is you know and then i just laugh it over and i love them when i come up to preach usually sometimes they are standing oh yeah let's see what he's saying that is unusual what has he said that kenneth Higgins has not said what has he said? let's see it. many times usually when i start talking five ten minutes they start softening up a little they just look at nod and later they do like they want to open the notebook they open it a little and then later on they're like ah this i mean this is <laughs> pastor when they persecute you it's not unusual it's not always because you are wrong 
sometimes it's because you are right your assignment is to help even your persecutors so accommodate their ignorance while they change that's what makes you a leader the ability to see the more superior version of themselves hmm. i'm blessed by my own teaching here already the last the last secret to sustainable impact is the availability of financial resources please write it down this is a minister's conference and i'm just hoping and praying that god truly added value this morning to someone's life finance please look up pastors you will bear me witness and every man of god here will tell you whoever ignores the place of financial resources in kingdom advance will pay for it and pay for it again and again you see come David, when you start out in ministry you don't really need finances usually you meet at one corner under a tree somewhere all you are concerned about is the power of god falls on you you teach you don't need a mic you don't need anything so your focus will be on jesus your growth and all of that but now you get to a point where leadership where administration and other things begin to come in the financial burden of ministry can strangle your prayer life it can strangle your word life it can even strangle your values everybody say finance one of the questions that i ask the lord sincerely from the depth of my heart i learned this from pat robinson the founder of cbn 700 club he said when god called him to do ministry he asked god three things he said lord please give me three things number one wisdom number two favor number three the anointing of the holy spirit if you will give me these three i will go when i heard it i went back to god i said god i don't know if i'm going to ask you i've asked you before for your presence and now maybe let me ask first before i will find out later that i made a mistake please talk to me about the finance of this vision that you are showing me how is it going to come and where will it come from you see the way ministers have been attacked everywhere you call people to sow seeds the next thing someone is insulting you they, that is not the system of the world and of course i know that here and there people have exaggerated these things because there are bills to pay i don't want to tell you the weekly budget that runs this ministry it is not necessary but just believe me when i tell you you can run a conference with the weekly budget of this ministry and we're not even in our own place it's true the rentals the transportation the power and all the things that have to be put in place and yet you are supposed to be focused and loving that's why some men of god come up the stage you see the anger Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Is it this? what part of amen? Can't you can't and you know that this this pain, the person is not bad. He's trying to say encourage me and you are refusing. The Holy Ghost can use money to create joy. You are pastors imagine that we came here right now and we told you there is no finance for tonight's meeting the communion alone for tomorrow if i tell you how much was spent on the communion just for tomorrow's miracle service you will be surprised you ask yourself whether it's necessary or necessary must we take communion can't we just speak prophecy instead prophecy is cheaper just be blessed i mean what is there with communion
it will not cost you anything for starters less than 25 million naira per month to float a television station how much per month not hd that's the channels you switch that you say please let's move to another channel that's what they paid did you hear what i said those channels that you see a lot of haze is it black is it white this is what they paid didn't satan pay men to say jesus is not lord as soon as he resurrected they called some people and said okay come let me tip you say jesus is not lord we will settle the words on the top and satan is still using money today if the church of the lord jesus christ is not empowered in these end times my brothers and my sisters please listen to me this is not about an addiction to money this is money just like the anointing tools for kingdom advance it is important some of our visitors we just got news that because of i think the convocation or so i didn't even know there was convocation happening on on saturday and now they just passed a directive that you know all our people there they should evacuate them from the um the the hotels that belong you know that we lodge them there can you imagine that just like that get out out we have visitors coming you and your money get out now imagine if i come and whisper and say reverend bandoma pastor fred please we need five hundred thousand this night now can you find a way if i do it directly to pinch me so find a way Money can help you have integrity. Oh. Let me tell you this. It's true. It's true. Financial resources are important. Provided they are kept within the jurisdiction of their relevance. They work wonders. We need heavy financial resources. The gospel is free. But the means to take it to the lost is very expensive. The vehicle that carries the gospel is heavy. every church thank you and that includes businesses please listen we're going to pray must have i've stated this before but number one must have a strategy for income generation now the bible is very clear as to how financial resources should come into the church the bible allows for tithes allows for offerings and all kinds of givings and partnership the bible allows that provided the resources are used with integrity and truthfulness but because of the peculiarity of our world today if all you do is depend on tithes and offering you will only run church services you can't run projects i've i've been i've been to the churches of all my dear friends and i've seen the projects that they are doing and many of you may not know but with all humility and to the glory of God, we acquired a property recently. And um, I may not tell you how much that is, but I can only give you an idea. 36 plots of land. Now listen, it was paid cash without raising any, even the leaders didn't even know. So that when we come to church, we can serve God in truth and in spirit. And not just to come and say, people, we are going to have to do this. I'm not saying it's wrong to challenge people. Don't trivialize it. Reverend Uban Doma shared here that there are people who have the grace for helps. Anybody that is a kingdom financier, your first assignment after knowing God is to be extremely wealthy. If you are not wealthy, you are wicked and you are failed. To supply for the resources and the blessings of heaven. I insist and I make sure that there's no financial pressure whatsoever on the workers and the leaders in this ministry. That everything that has to do with committing seeds is done by revelation and truthfulness. Don't be angry when you see pastors manipulating people. I don't endorse it. But sometimes it's an expression of the pain. They were mentored to trivialize finances. 
and so they pursued the things of God sincerely so but now they found out that there is a level of financial capability you must have to excel a Jimmy during the business session for those of you who were here he ran us through a lot of demands minus luxury pastors will tell you here the amount of an average man of God just on dressing just not luxury just on dressing can build many houses are we together because a man of God cannot dress shabby and dress scattered is the same you that will say what is this this is not Jesus When I started with the Lord, there was a year that God opened my eyes to the necessity of financing ministry. I remember when I switched and I said, believers, it's me that has been teaching you on purpose and the power of God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. Now, in addition to that curriculum, God has introduced finance. Whoa, whoa. I had, I got the blow of my life. Apostle has backsliding. Jesus is Lord. What happened? Apostle, leaving all of these things to come to mundane things like finances. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, don't hate anyone. Don't, don't. I'm like Joseph. Sometimes persecution is proof that you are really sent. You see the ignorance in the people. And you know if I don't manifest, they will remain like this. They are persecuting me is validating the fact that they are ignorant. I went to the Lord crying to him and said, God, what is all this? And the Lord told me, you can choose to listen to men or listen to me. I'm showing you the future. And I said, Lord, show me your ways, please. Let me not get to a point in ministry where I have to do what I shouldn't do because I'm looking for finance most members don't know that men of god have other things with their lives too who pays the school fees of that man of god's child how do you run the church by the privilege of god's grace there are so many of our children here that we take care of it's not something to blow a trumpet about not school fees they are upkeep there are people whose daily living is in the pocket of another person and that done effortlessly i have seen and i tell you by the privilege of god's mercy the advantage of financial resources maybe this is why some of you came for this conference it may be a pastor conference but you have done well in these other areas but you may have been the victim of this skirmish communication by the gates of hell that financial resources are not necessary change your mind Please change your mind the earlier the better so that you will not eat your children in the future and so that you will not sell your children to pay debt. The prophet, although a prophet, he died and left his children and one woman in debt. By the time you pastor families that are not doing well, you will find out that it is in the efficiency of the people that you are also blessed hallelujah when God showed me this I was grateful when I found the keys listen to me my brothers and my sisters full-time ministry in today's world does not mean the absence of activating streams of income it means full-hearted commitment hear what I'm telling you the 21st century church you need to adjust your understanding of full-time ministry full-time ministry does not mean throw away every opportunity to lift you it means let your heart be committed full-time because if you ignore everything and say me i'm not i'm not a businessman i don't do anything let me tell you hunger will always drive israel to egypt it was hunger that drove Israel to Egypt. Like he's driving many of you right now. 
You love God. Until now you are beginning to teach things that you know should not be. If you must be outstanding in ministry, please make it a point of duty by the grace of God to conquer this finance thing. The same way you press for the anointing. The same way you press for revelation. Don't dichotomize them. And don't let the devil make you feel one is carnal. And No, they are all spiritual. What is carnal about money? It takes the spirit for you to prosper. The same way you press for character, anointing, revelation. Please add finance to the list. As the tools together. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. I've taught you. No prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took resources to bring the body. Who was the owner of the grave that Jesus entered? He came out from it and saved you. But whose grave? Who donated his grave for prophecy to be fulfilled? Whose donkey did Jesus climb? If he was broke and he did not have a donkey, there would be no triumphant entry. He was born in a manger. Whose manger? I will never pastor and lead the people who know God and don't know finances. They will know both. I believe in influence. I believe in the ease that kingdom understanding together with influence provides. Africa, do not mix Christianity and the depraved culture that our servitude, our pre- and post-colonial servitude has been interwoven with Christianity. We mix everything together and make doctrines out of them. Africa has largely been a territory of servitude. We have not understood leadership. We don't know influence. It's strange to our culture. And so in the dealings of God, we limit our understanding to submission, which is important. But we hate influence. And the principles that get us to the corridors of power, we hate and we fight. It's wonderful to fear God. It's wonderful to love God. But if you do not have an efficient leadership, you will not last. There will not be a system of building. The reason why this building is built because, is because one block allowed another to stay on it. If the block refuses and says, that's not how I am, you will not have a structure. Leadership. Number three, strategy. You have to execute systemically to build according to patterns. Number four is your reach. From Jerusalem, from Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. He would have just said to the ends of the earth, but he broke them in levels. The way you sell Jesus in Jerusalem is not how you would do it in Judea. It's not how you would do it in, in Samaria. For every one of these regions and levels, there are strategies for your reach. And finally, finance. You need finance. It is one of the greatest tools. Do you know that in Europe today, Pastor, Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They've never had one city-wide crusade. One. One. You know what they do? Agree to be gay and agree to be a Muslim will pay you through school. And they go back and say, Daddy, this is what they said. You say, I won't pay your school fees and you will not be a Muslim. You say, I've gotten the answer. Sir, where is the place to sign the signature? To be gay? Fine. To be a Muslim, fine. One of our dear ladies, I remember many years ago, she got born again. Her brother was still a Muslim. The father was still a Muslim. Then the brother got born again. Then eventually the father got born again. When the father got born again, pastor, true story, the wealthy people stashed money at the back of a car and drove from Kogi to Lagos. They said, what is wrong? Sit down. What happened? Is it that you lost in business? What happened? Because they believe if you come to Jesus, it is because you are frustrated and you are welcome. But then they are saying, I mean, how have you reduced yourself to give your life to Christ? What happened? The day she told me, I said, my God. They snatched the car with money and opened it. 
please deny Jesus and have money to get your life back. Hear me. If Michael Jackson ever said Jesus, even by mistake, he would have won more souls. I am Michael Jackson. I love Jesus on his shirt. You will write your name too. I am Sam. I love even a wizard will say, I am a wizard. I need Jesus. That's the power of influence. Nobody asks you to wear what you wear. They made you wear it. They created a need and forced it. We can force a generation to see the relevance of Jesus. Not by poking it on people's eyes. But building correctly. The church must prosper. Please pastors hear me. Gone are the days where you tell people I'm a pastor and they pity you. They say so pastor Alpha, this is it. You went and got a lecturing job in University of Joss. And now with all that God has done, this is how you want to waste your life. Whoever said ministry was a cause. Whoever said serving Jesus is what people do when they are failed in life. And they don't know what else to do. They say instead of wasting my life, at least let me serve in the vineyard. We must change that perception. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes finance to lift it up. We are mandated to lift it high. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nado kaka sunanka, ubangi chika isayabo. Naki mama. Please hold hands with someone by your left and by your right. Micah chapter four, please. We are going to pray. Sila Maharusia Katabranda Gadusia. There is coming a generation that will defy this. There has to be a generation that will represent Christ properly. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the influence of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of other stratas and influences and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it next verse verse 2 and many nations how many many nations shall come say come and let us go up to the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem you see let me tell you every great move of God starts like a joke the kingdom of God is likened to a living it's a parable a living looks small and harmless until it sees the what they call it the dough you just mix a little of it and stand back and watch the power of that tiny thing you added. I remember those days when my mother would be making cake or something. I used to wonder that small thing. Just throw the thing there and just mix it and it begins to rise. That's what is happening. Something you are receiving. We are making noise and people are these are noise makers. They are just broke people consoling themselves. Uh-uh. The Lord himself is the captain of this army. God has gathered us from several places to tell you that whether or not in the fivefold ministry like Reverend Ubandoma shared or whatever dimension of kingdom service you must insist that Lord through you my generation will know that Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray.
Se balakata brande gede balarabos. Radesa de balanda se katapos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish the minister's conference were to run for days. I would have taught you a lot of things. One of them is the ministry of men. You are not free until men come into your life. Please listen. We are going to pray. If you have money, you are not yet favored. You know you are favored when you have access to the hearts of men. True favor is not just money. True favor is men and all that they have. I can give you money. Doesn't mean I love you. But when I give you my heart, with my heart is everything connected to me. Listen, let me tell you this. I remember the first major financial miracle that God brought to this ministry. Till tomorrow, I don't know the person. It was like a joke. Because when they make transfers to the ministry, I get the alerts. And I saw an alert that almost brought me to my knees. I said, God, what is this? Who is this person? And they didn't even text to say, okay, I'm the one. I said, they should try to see if they can get me the person. And they couldn't. And I just said, this is it. Man. If you do not have men that lift your hands, you are going to fall in ministry. You may be Moses, but your hands will be tired. And you will need the hands that hold you financially, spiritually, giving you encouragement and love. You can't imagine how blessed I am hearing that pastor left Gombe. Gombe is very far. Zamfara, far. Reverend Ubanduma was here with his family. He's here again. One of my friends called me and said he's coming. And you know, this is not a standard conference. We didn't send any letter of invitation. I spotted different ministers here and there. Father, the mighty men that will hold my hands as I lift up your name, I draw them in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men, oh God. Shalabarakatosa predekatesh. Kalaba shanadas. Open the doors of favor with men. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. When Jesus came to the fig tree, he expected to find fruit. He came because he was hungry. Not finding fruit, he cursed it. If he found fruit, he would have blessed it. If your life and your ministry does not produce extraordinary results, your life will be full of bitterness and hatred and anger and competition. This is what you see happening around the body of Christ. This one hating this one, this one fighting this one, this one getting angry. There is no need. When God invests a dimension of strange results in your life and ministry, by the teaching of truth and by the mighty works that come from your hands, you will be surprised to see the way the nations will flow. They will inconvenience themselves to honor Christ in your life. Father, give me results. Real results. 
results of salvation results of transformation results of miracles signs wonders breakthroughs is someone praying and evidence is the end of all argument a genuine result is the end of all argument you are in business cry give me results in business give my organization results consistent results please pray give me results hallelujah hallelujah John the prophet is in the prison and he sends his disciples to question the messiahship of Jesus. He says, go and ask him, are you the messiah or should we expect another? Jesus does not answer. He turns back and begins to heal the sick and cast out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell him what are the signs of the messiah. Ask John. You need real results in your life. You heard the testimony of our precious mommy. You see that? That you just sit in a car and something, a challenge of many years just goes. Everybody is a giver. There is a level of results that will make them give. Please listen. Let me tell you this. The same person who will say, I will not give you five naira. Is the same person who will carry money and say, sir, the privilege of having this. Everybody who gives to you has relatives in need. That they say, don't disturb me again. And they will come. There is a level of impact that will make any seed look like a favor to you. You need to trust God. Results empower you yourself. There are companies today and there are businesses today that take a sizable portion of their profits. And I'm not talking of small startups. And transfer to this ministry consistently because of something that happened. I don't say this to brag. It's because we're in a pastor's conference. I am a non-executive board member in certain companies. I never sat down in any board meeting. I don't even know them. They believe I represent the ark of God to their business. And they are there. And I just see alerts in my phone. Where is this coming from? Don't trivialize results. Results can make your life easy. We are going to pray it again. Please don't be tired. Our time is gone. But we are men of God. Listen. Lord, I have seen certain dimensions of results. But multiply the results upon my life. Beyond argument. Please pray beyond contention abaraka to sabra nekete baladash endeke pras kada baladash Hallelujah. The last prayer point. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There is a goal, there is an object behind everything that we do, that we call ministry. Whether it is the fivefold ministry or your business as a ministry, Ministry is any channel that can lead to souls saved, lives transformed, and Jesus glorified. If giving birth can do that, it is ministry. If singing can do that, it is ministry. It says there was a man sent from God. His name was John 7. 
the same the bible says came for a witness say witness to bear witness of the light that men through him his witness his testimony his results might believe that's it when all is said and done dear people of god this is all we are driving at that through my life through the hand of god upon my life through my business through the ministry through family through everything that jesus be glorified you're going to turn this to a prayer and say father use everything use my results use my life use my teachings use my business use my publicity even for your glory someone pray For your glory. Use the wealth that you give me. Use the influence that you give me. The power of the Holy Spirit. Access to the hearts of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll just speak over your life now. We we'll allow the impartation for the miracle service. Our time is gone. We want to just release everyone to go and rest. Tonight we have a session and then we are breaking the fast tomorrow by one. And after that we return for the miracle service and an impartation. But I will pray over all that we are involved with. But then the impartation, I know that many of you have come to receive. Look, let me tell you this. Truly speaking, a man can receive nothing except it is given. If God does not give you, you cannot have it. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want to pray. And the elders of the Jews build it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it. It's one thing to desire to build. But the Bible says they prospered and they finished. While they were building, there was prophecy. That was ensuring that the building prospers and that it finishes. It matters the voice and the voices that speak over your life and over your ministry. Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until a voice opened his heavens. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven. When he met with John... John said, mm -mm, I desire, I mean, this is what you have is what I desire. I'm not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. No man can open, as it were, in this regard, his own heavens. It will take a voice. God kept watching but never spoke from heaven. When he submitted to the prophetic ministry of John, his heavens were opened and a voice spoke. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen, pastors, a voice has to tell creation to hear you. Hear ye that church. Hear ye that business. Hear ye that radio program. Hear ye that TV program otherwise you will go up the mountain nobody will come you will go up the valley nobody will come you will stand by the rivers of Gennesaret and nobody will come because a voice never said they hear you hear ye him there are men and women of God here you are anointed God has blessed you but your environment is not placing a demand on the grace.
there seems to be a resistance. I have seen powerful men of God, absolutely anointed, but there is no open doors, no influence, no access, no increase. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from God. I submit before you and even before your people. I confess that there is nothing I have in myself outside of Christ. The privilege of the office, the mantle, and the grace you have given. This has come from you and it belongs to you. I declare over every ministry here by the power of prophecy be shifted to the next level of exploit be shifted to the next level of exploit be shifted to the next level of exploit I declare in the name of Jesus the two lift gates that are closed over your ministry we speak right now may they be opened in the name of Jesus the men and the women that must show up in this season to both protect and to lift the hand of God upon your life I call them by prophecy right now I'm seeing a key in the spirit a big key this is what the Lord is showing me Lord whatever this access represents in the spirit and for whoever this is for I pray and I cry to you let the keys of their individual territories be given unto them in the name of Jesus there are men of God here that love God but you are out of revelation you have cast out you don't even know what to study again you have preached everything fresh illumination from the throne receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for your prayer life Shakatopa Rakatabatea let fresh fire come upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says certain men came to David in the cave of Adolam they saw him in a cave yet they were not afraid they still said you will be king over us listen it is terrible to have people come to you just looking for your glory alone you must have people that whether in glory and in shame, they are there for you. I declare may God find such people and call to your life. There are pastors that have many members, but they do not have kings. They do not have men who have voices. Listen to me. It is in the multitude of men that a king's honor is. But in the multitude of kings, a king's dominion is also enforced you don't just need men you also need men that have voices i pray for you god will not only bring men he will bring influences to your ministry whatever is taunting the growth of any church here any ministry you have done the best in gathering everything you know to do I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit may the gates of your church be open may the gates of your fellowship be open may the gates of your ministry be open hallelujah the Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of there are many pastors any good thing you do is misunderstood you call for a healing meeting they say you are using charms you want to bless people they say you are selfish you sow into people they say it's manipulation you don't give they say you are greedy let me tell you correct perception correct sight is something only god can do he touched his eyes and men were like trees he touched it again god needs to touch the eyes of people where your church is located so that they will see you for what you stand for because there are times listen to me that before you get to the king, Ahitophel reached there before you. And he can give a counsel that is not of God. 
I declare every misrepresentation of your life, of your ministry, of your business, of your organization, let it be straightened out and corrected now. You have humbled yourself to honor me, to honor the grace that God has put upon my life. I cry to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the grace and the mantle of honor, let it follow you back to your church. Let it follow you back to your business. Let it follow you back to your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me speak over your finances. We have taught here in this house that there are three levels of wealth. There is transactional wealth. Wealth that comes by exchanging value for a reward. There is transformational wealth. Wealth that comes on account of the impact you create in people. But there is sovereign wealth. Wealth that comes by prophecy and by the finger of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every church here. And I pray for every project and every individual here. By the mystery of divine supplies. The raven that can come to feed Elijah at Brook Cherry. Let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. Let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two things. He says, the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble. There are people in ministries that the devil will position intentionally to continue to misrepresent the ministry and to destroy what they represent. You are going to have to trust God for grace. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. One wrong voice can scatter what you have been doing for years. One wrong voice. The rumor about Jesus that he said he would destroy the temple and he would build it in three days. Some said he would build it in one day. All the two, they had it somewhere. Listen to me. There are people that come to churches and tear down everything God is doing. They, you never see them in one church. In three years, they've gone to ten churches. Then they start writing articles. I've been everywhere and I've been to every church. No man of God is sincere. No man of God is true. They may be well-meaning, but there are spirits that are responsible for those things. I pray in the name of Jesus that a spiritual garrison be created around your ministry that protects the hand of God upon your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. For any ministry trusting God for land, you are trusting God to shift to the next level. May the God of heaven, in a way you may not even understand, may he surprise you in Jesus' name. Finally, I pray for you. The encounters that can sustain a man. The encounters that can strengthen your conviction. That you will no longer talk based on hearsay. Or because a man you respect is talking or saying the same thing. May that level of encounter in the name of Jesus, may God grant it unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We will celebrate extraordinary results from all of our platforms in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray, pray for your destiny. Salaskade, Bashkana, Katabranda, Katekapos.
Kete planta kata pa kotos koto breke teke leka pa The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline 